when these teachers called me and told me what they told me, I was heartbroken. And then it, it, it reminded me of what I dealt with. But what I dealt with was more on an educational level. Again, I didn't get diagnosed with dys- dyslexia until later on in high school. And then um, shortly after that, I got diagnosed with depression. So you got to pay attention. I, I had um, a physician tell me, do you think she's depressed? I said, what the fuck does depression look like in a four-year-old? Great tell me what it looks like. What did he say? Um, you know, they'll be a little bit more to themselves. They'll be quiet. Uh-huh. They'll be, de- I was like, no, then she ain't depressed. <laughs> <That's> not- <laughs> because the thing about my, my children is if they feel any type of way, my thing is this, if you feel something, you need to communicate that to me. The only way I can help you is if you communicate it to me. So if you feel sad, you know, if you feel lonely, if you feel like mm-hmm. you're not being loved enough or hugged enough or anything. So how, how do you have a question? Me. Me a question? How do you have a conversation with a four year old? Like when you're trying to understand how they're feeling, do you ask them like, you know, how you feel? Well, are you happy to say? When she was four, she's always been extremely intelligent and articulate to the point yeah. to where she could communicate. So it's easier because she could communicate, but there are four year olds, you know, that don't speak. Mm -hmm. So at that point, then it's very difficult to have a conversation, but then you have to find ways to communicate with that child. That's not speaking just because they're not speaking doesn't mean that they don't understand. So my thing was because she's very articulate because she could speak well, because she can let you know exactly how she was feeling about any and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it made my, my situation a little bit easier but when she did tell me mommy this is what's happening with me mommy this is how I'm feeling then it mm-hmm. made it easier because I'm like okay so this is your reality mm-hmm. but like I said it, it has to be extremely hard to be a teacher I know oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't have it in me and, and the first teachers that your children should have we should have are our parents yeah <laughs> Again, everybody was trying to work and provide. Yeah. Don't nobody have time for that. Yeah. Now it's scary because now we have the internet. Now we have social media. Now we have kids that have learned wrong and they want to teach your kids wrong. Mm-hmm. So now it's scary because now you got to go back and unteach them shit because okay. they, you ain't going to teach me about it. Well, doop, 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 I'm going to look it up. Sex, doop, 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 I'm going to look it up. All of these things, I'm going to look it up. That's scary now. We didn't have that shit growing up. Yep, and I think with every generation, it's going to get scarier. It is, because, because it's, it's going to become much easier to find what you're looking for. Less as it is now. Yep, I agree. Whatever it is you're looking for, you may not even be looking for it, but you're going to get it. You're going to find it. You're going to get it. you going to find it. And, have you ever 